you've given us a brilliant afternoon, a brilliant interview. Um, you've had an extraordinary career so far, and in my view, you're still young and, and fit and, and urgent. There's probably one more big one coming. May it be in Goa? Fair enough, may be in Goa. But we, we're going to ask you to pick um, your, your, your best five-a-side team. And because we've done, in, in Blue Peter terms, <coughs> here's one I prepared earlier, I'm just going to remind you that there's a South African, a Dane, a Serb, a Korean, and the inevitable. I'm just going to say the inevitable <laughs> in at number five. So if I, if I say to you, um, who's your first pick? Who's the South African who's in your dream five? I would say the one that, the one that has the, the, I thought he had the biggest possibility to be a, a real superstar was Spiwi Shabalala. Spiwi Shabalala scored the winning goal for South Africa against Mexico in their first uh, World Cup match on home soil. And Shaba played for me. I mean, yeah, Shabba played for me. And I, I, I got a text from him last week, you know, and he was, he was talking about, he was saying some very, very nice things. So this is not, this is not payback time for him, by the way. But I, told, I always told Shabba that he should play in the States. You know, I mean, he could play in Spain or he could play in the, he could have played as his pomp in the Premier League. And because, but the Saints would have loved him. He would have been a lot, he had the dreadlocks. He was little, he was tricky. He, he had a bit of a bubbly personality. They would have loved him. He'd be a superstar. Just for his skill on the ball and his left foot, he'd have been good anywhere. But Shabba was an outstanding player that should have played outside of South Africa. But by the time he left, he was... It was too. It was too uh, too late for him. Shaba's number one, and I guess the guy who's number two, women all over the world, thought of as Mr. Loverman. The bastard gets born into a dynasty. He's about six two, full head of hair, and he probably will have when he's a hundred. Um, as Mrs. Merton said, what first attracted you to the magnificent Dane Michael Loudrop? Oh. Um, I mean, Michael, Michael's one of the few players, and I say this, one of the few players that when I've, when I've been training, I've been learning. Because it, you, would, you would say, like, this is what we're going to do. And, and Michael would do something, and he'd go, can we do that as well, Gaffer? Yeah, you can. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we can, apparently. <laughs> you know, so it would be like that. So, so not all the time, but sometimes you just see him do something in training, and you go, oh, you know, you'd, you'd step back. I mean, the one, the one I, re I remember him in the World Cup against Nigeria, where he's looking that way and he just lifted the ball. He did that for us in a league game and he nearly brought the house down. You know, it was incredible. But Michael was one of those few people, and I always ask this question. I always ask this question about, about the sort of the great players, like the Yari Lichtmanns, the Sammy Hippias, the, the people that are great players. I always ask them, who is the most important person in your career? And not many of them say a coach. And Michael was that. Michael, I said to him, Michael, you know what? You're playing in Japan now. You're still just a Danish amateur player that just wants to play football. And he was. And he was that when he was at Real Madrid as well. He was just someone that loved playing football. And when he went out there, he was like a big kid. He played and expressed himself. I said to him, I said, Michael Jordan said once, you see my picture in the newspaper, you see my soul on the field. That was Michael. <laughs> um, sensational. Um, when you were playing against Pep Guardiola and Arsene Wenger and whoever was, I don't know if Trapattoni was the Fiorentina manager, I think he yes. might have been in that, that extraordinary good. Champions League group. You had a bit of, um, you, have, you had a bit of Novakovic for the soul. Um, tell us about your beautiful Serbian. Oh, uh, Neboshin Novakovic. He was, when I came to IIK, he was 34. They wanted to get rid of him. And after the first training, he said to me, he says, Coach, don't get rid of me. You're the first real coach I've had. I said, stop smoking, do some stretches, and listen to me, and I'll see, what we, I'll see how we go. He was magnificent. He was, he was brilliant. 
And the night before we played Barcelona, Barcelona had a goalkeeper called Hesp, who was about two and a half metres tall. He was huge. But I'd watched them, and he lost his goal sometimes. When people, when people were in shooting positions, he would advance thinking, I'm so big, you can't chip me. And I said to Nebo, I said to Nebo, the night before, that it, were, it wasn't something that I told him three weeks before. As we were walking off the training field the night before, I just said, hey, by the way, if you're in a shooting position and you see Hesp losing his goals, go for a chip. He said, I'm going to score. He said, I'll chip him. He said, I will do. And I'm not joking. We played, we played a little one-two on the edge of the box. Nebo was running across the penalty area and reversed it, a dink, and it hit the underside of the crossbar and went in. And he ran across to the bench and he said, I told you, Gaffer. <laughs> Every play in Barcelona and he's making a joke, you know. He was, he was an absolute, and both Arsene and Bora, uh, Arsene's assistant, both said to me, and they always said to me, you know that Nabakovic was a, he was a top class player. He should have played somewhere else. And he used to say to me, he used to, when, I, when I had a go at him, he'd say, I don't smoke, I give up smoking, and I do stretching, and you're still complaining. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he thought that was, that was the be all and end all, but no, he was a great player. Poor old Hesp, Rudy did fail. Yes. Uh, in fourth place in, in the top five, um, a Seth Korean that I don't know, called, oh. I think, Yoon Jung No. Yeah, no, no Jun Yoon. He was at, no Jung Yoon. Yeah, he was, when I was at San Fretchi, and I told you we had to, we had to look for cheaper options. Uh, our president was a, was a friend of the president of the Korean Football Association, uh, Pak San. So he, he sent me to Korea to watch a game. Uh, two players that were recommended by this Mr. Pak. So I came over, went to Seoul. I'm stood on a pitch that's got no, no, no stands or anything. It's just like a, a grass bank around the pitch. So I'm stood on this grass bank watching this miserable game and the two players that he's recommended are hopeless and so behind behind me on an all-weather pitch there's another game going on and i've just checked on my shoulder and it's a fierce tempo and because the, the all-weather pitch is a bad surface they are going through each other well that attracted that attracted the scotsman in me so <laughs> i'm now i've got my back towards the game here and i'm watching and there's one player playing that is like lightning, only he could handle the ball running. And I've, I've gone, Paxan, what's this game? He says, oh, it's, it's, it's uh, the Korean university team is playing against uh, the Thailand university team. I said, is it the full? The full? Oh, he says, no, they're in the 20s. I said, the number 11 there, how old is he? Oh, he's 18. I said, can we get him across to Hiroshima? He said, Yes, why? I said, I'd like him to come across. He came across and he, he spent seven days with us. He was absolutely superb for the first five days. And every afternoon he would say to me, he would say, can I train with the, can I train with the reserves? Well, I, I want you to be fresh for tomorrow. No, I'll, I'll be fresh, don't worry. And he trained with the reserves. At the end of the week, I went down to watch the reserves training. The rest of them were hopeless. The rest of them were just... We played a very tight 4v4, which they couldn't deal with, really. I wasn't taking the session, so I was watching. The only one that could deal with it was no. So I've walked in, and I've walked in, and I've gone, guys, this is not good enough. You know, we, and I, I, I gave it a little bit of a rah, rah, rah. The, no, the Korean lad, he took it like as, you're not good enough. He, st he started going through people, he was shooting, he was over in kicks, he was, he was like, it was the World Cup final. So I thought, hang on a second, this is a player. This is not only a good player, but this is a character. So I signed him on the spot, and I, I don't know how many, three years later or something, he was playing for Korea in the United States World Cup, and he was magnificent. He was, he was one of the best players I've, I've ever worked with. He was... He was, what, he was one of these explosive players that could run forever. I don't know. Physiologically, that doesn't make sense, really. But he could. He could go and go and go and go. 
And I mean, the amount of full speed sprints he would do in a game was incredible. I loved him. And he was a great kid. You confused me about um, having fumbled and got back to front um, a South Korean name. You confused me with the last guy we'll speak about because he comprises the fifth in your team. Because I thought I knew um, this this fella. I'd seen him playing. I'd met him. I'd interviewed him. But to you, he was just Henke. Now, I know that now. He's Henke to people who know him. But he was King of Kings or he was Henrik or he was Larson. But... To you, he was Henke. Yeah, I mean, Henke was, uh, I mean, everybody in Sweden calls him Henke, Henke, Henke Larsson. And he would, he would always be in, in the team because I think he was just, a, he was just an unbelievable competitor and a, a very talented footballer. So if you're going to have those other players in the team, I'd, I'd, want, I'd want one that was not going to accept defeat. It was to the point where I'd worked with Hen Henke for about, I think it was my first season. We'd won the cup. We won the cup with Hell. So I came in mid-season. They were struggling a little bit. Hen Henke had just come from Barcelona. We started improving. We improved, we improved. We finished fourth in the league. Uh, just missed Europe, but we won the cup, the Swedish cup. So we qualified. And at the end of the year, they had this... I think it was called the Royal League, where all the Scandinavian top teams played off in a sort of a tournament. And we'd been drawn against, I think it was Volerengen in Norway. So after the season in November, going up to Norway and playing in the snow, I don't think Henke was looking forward to that. So I got a call from my mate, Jim Lawler in, in Man United. He says, the, he says the, gaffer's, the gaffer's having a... He says he's having one. He says, I can't find a striker for him. He says... Wayne's the only striker we've got fit. He says Louis Sahar's down, and and I don't, I can't remember who the other one was down. Maybe it's uh, the Italian Macchino. Maybe maybe it was him. And and he says they're all down. He says we need a striker. I said I could have one for you. He says who? I said Larson. He said what? I said Larson. He says he's fit enough. I said he's fit as a butcher's dog. I said I've just been, I've just been with him on the car park. I said, if you, he says, the gaffer loves him. I says, let me go. I said, do you want me to ask him? He said, ask him. And while you're asking him, I'll ask the gaffer. So I goes out, I goes out and I says, Henke, do you want to go and play against Volerengen in the, in the Champions League? Or do you want to go on loan to Manchester United? <laughs> then he went, what? I said, serious? He said, you're serious? I says, yeah, I, th I think so. He went, can I ask my missus? Because Magdalena, she makes... I've met, she makes I've most met of Magdalena. The big, she, makes, she makes most of the big decisions, and that's with all due respect to, to Henke, because he's a, a great family man. But Magdalena is very, 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 very smart. She wouldn't, she wouldn't let Henke make a bad move. She, she made his move to Barcelona happen. Yeah, there you go. So, the proof of the pudding. So... He says, I'll come, I'll, come, I'll come early tomorrow and uh, I'll let you know. Well, I knew it was going to be yes. So I go away and uh, Jim puts Sir Alex on. He said, Stuart, he says, hey, I see you yes. I said, yeah. I said, he will do it for you. I said, and I'll tell you what, he will grow and the lads, your lads will love playing with him. I said, this will turn him on. This will... This will be this will be wiring him up. I said, don't worry. I said, and he can he can play. I said, and he can still. I said, I've had him was playing as a bit of a ten. I said, and he still scored seventeen goals. I says, but I've seen him linking that way. I never I never seen it before. I said, he's not just getting at the end of crosses and finishing. He went, oh, Jesus. So like, we'll do it, you know. So Henke come the day after. He said, he said. Uh, we, Magdalena said it's a good idea. So they came across. They they came across to the Grand Hotel in Helsingborg. One night they went down. Magdalena Henke went in. It was all done. And then I was in Dubai at the end of the season. And I'd just taken the family to see Circus Soleil. And I'm in a taxi going back to the hotel. And United were playing. It was Henke's first game. I think it was Aston Villa. So I'm listening. 
and in Arabic on the taxi's radio, it's <laughs> going bah, 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 uh, Larson, bah, 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 Scholes. Well, I said, Excuse me, I said, Is that the Villa and uh, United game? Yes, I said, What's the score? 1 0 United. I turned to my missus, I said, Larson. <laughs> I said, That's Larson. I said, Who scored the goal? He said, Mr. Larson. I said, Thank you. So that's how I found out. <laughs> So it was great for me because I thought, well, Sir Alex is going to be—he's going to be absolutely delighted, and he was, and he was obviously. You said Henke did really well, and he was everything that I thought he would do. But and he loved it. He loved it. 